Let us pray. Lord, open our eyes and our hearts to the word that you have before us. Lord, open our minds so that we can do your will with the words that you give to us. Lord, may we do all things for your honor and glory. Amen. Jeremiah, the poor prophet Jeremiah, misunderstood, had no interest in being a prophet. When the Lord tried to call Jeremiah, he said, oh no, Lord, I am much too young and, and, and people won't listen to me. And what did God say? Yeah, don't you worry about that. They're going to listen to me. You carry my message. Jeremiah was not well liked. He always gave messages that nobody wanted to hear. He would go in and he would prophesize for the Lord and people would drive him out of town. Nobody liked Jeremiah. Isn't that a sad thing? A prophet of the Lord, sharing the word of the Lord, standing in front of God's people, trying to call them back to repentance, trying to call them back into fellowship with God, and they're saying what? Yeah, thanks, no thanks. We like things just the way they are. I think we'll leave them that way, so you be on your way. The prophet Jeremiah never had but one convert in his whole prophetic career. One person who said, hallelujah, thank you, Jeremiah, for sharing that with us. One. The crying prophet. He was forever crying. That's what we choose to start Advent with because one of the things that's important is this piece of scripture comes from a time when the people were struggling deeply. No more temple. No more sacrifice. They're exiles. They're away. They don't have a home. They don't have a place to be. And the prophet Jeremiah steps into the middle of this with a message of hope, calling the people. The people have started to ignore God because they think God has deserted them. They think God no longer cares about them, so they just go about doing things their own way because God is not in the picture. So the Lord sends the prophet Jeremiah to share this message of hope with his people. Jeremiah chapter 33. The day will come, says the Lord, when I will do for Israel and Judah all the good things I have promised them. In those days and at that time, I will raise up a righteous descendant from King David's line. He will do what is just and right throughout the land. In that day, Judah will be saved and Jerusalem will live in safety. And this will be its name. The Lord is our righteousness. For this is what the Lord says. David will have a descendant sitting on the throne of Israel forever. And there will always be Levitical priests to offer burnt offerings and grain offerings and sacrifices to me. Thank you. A message of hope in a time of despair. That's what Jeremiah brings. And it is a time of despair. The people feel that God has left them to their own devices. But here's the thing that Jeremiah says. 
God does not shy away from our struggles. If you're struggling, God has not left us. God is still there. Because God is in the midst of the reality of our everyday human life. And God understands the struggles we go through in our everyday human life. He has not deserted you. That day will come, says the Lord. That day will come. Hope. That day will come when I will do what I promise to do. We are given in this passage promise, and we are given hope. Just as the people of Judah and Israel were given promise and hope. Because God understands that we need hope. Because without hope, where are we? Without hope, the Apostle Paul says, without hope, why bother? We, we, are, we are the most people to be most pitied without hope. And God understands that we long, we long to trust the promises of God. But we're human. And we need prophets like Jeremiah standing up and saying, God lives to his promises. God lives to the things that he said. You can trust God. You can have hope in God because we long to have that hope. And in this season of Advent, as we come up to it, that's one of the things that we bring in, carry into it, hope. The longing for hope, the longing for the return of Jesus, <coughs> The anticipation that we have of that celebration day when we go and search out the baby Jesus and return them back to the manger scenes. Anticipation and hope and longing and wonder. That's what this season is about. We look at hope and we look at peace. You look at the person beside you and say, may the peace of Christ be with you. And if you're sitting by yourself, yell it to the other side. Go ahead. May the peace of Christ be with you. Yeah. Jesus says, share my peace. Because in my peace, there is hope. And in that sharing, see everyone smiling? There's joy. There's joy in that peace and that hope. And when we have that joy and that peace and that hope, we know that we are loved by God. God has not left us alone. God has never stepped away. God has always been there. God is always there. But sometimes we think it's us that has to do all the work. Sometimes we don't want to allow God to do the work. But the thing is, it's not pro us providing hope. It's not us providing peace. It's not us providing joy. And it's not us providing love. We share those things, but they are the things of God. They're ours to give away. God gives them to us. What a great Christmas present. Here, have joy, have hope, have peace, have it in abundance. I love you like crazy. Give it away. Share it. And if you give it all away, I'll give you more. Yeah. It's never ending. It's endless. It's eternal. It's wondrous. It's amazing. It's that time of Advent, that time we hope and joy. We have hope in God's promise, for I am about to create the new heavens and earth. We have peace in God's promise. David will have a descendant sitting on the throne of Israel forever. And we know that Jesus has come. And we know that he sits on the throne right now. And he will sit there forever. Even when he returns, he brings his throne. We have joy in God's promise. I will rejoice in Jerusalem and delight in my people, says the Lord. That I am a delight of the Lord, I can tell you some mornings when I look in the mirror, I'm not a delight of myself. I'm glad he's there. I need that lift. Thank you, Lord. Love in God's promise. 
God has shared absolute and total love with us. In that day, Judah will be saved and Jerusalem will live in safety. Eternal security in Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. God does not shy away from our struggles. When we think we're left alone and we feel those, those senses of depression, when we look in the mirror and we go, I don't like you. When we, and, and when we look at each other and we go, mm, I'm not so sure about you either. God is still with us and God is saying, turn to the person beside you and say, may the peace of Christ be with you. Do it often. Yell it across. Go ahead. Yes, there's the joy, there's the peace, there's the love. That is what we have to do at this time in order to feel that, in order to follow through what it is God has sent us out to do. God steps in to give us certainty. God steps in to give us hope and peace and joy and love. And it all came in Jesus Christ, didn't it? It all came in Jesus, who is our prophet, priest, and king. You've heard this? We say it every Christmas, every Advent. Let's say it together. Come, Lord Jesus. Try it again. Come, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for this morning. We thank you that we can gather But Lord, we think about the people who have not been able to come here to join us this morning. Lord, we lift them up to you in prayer as they come to our minds, as the Spirit brings them to our thoughts. We lift them up to you, Lord, so that they are known, that they are held, and they are loved, and they are prayed for, Lord, by the people that love them. Lord, even if it's ourselves, we are told to lift ourselves up before you so that we may enter your grace and your mercy and your love. Lord, we stand before you. We stand holding up others before you. We think about the people that are traveling. We think about the people that are sick, Lord. We think about the people that are just too busy to be here today. Lord, we think about them. They are part of our family, and we lift them up to you. Lord, we think about how it is that we can best be a light in this community, in this city, and in this country. How is it that we can be your light? Lord, we lift that up to you for answers. And we lift it all up in Christ's name. Amen.